Hi, welcome to Vegetarian Kitchen. My name is Arnie, and um, we've got today our first anniversary show. This is uh, Vegetarian Kitchen's birthday. So what I want to do is bake a birthday cake. Chocolate cake naturally has to be chocolate for me. And since it's partly my birthday, it's going to be chocolate cake. Chocolate cake, chocolate icing, but in the center I'm going to put um, preserves, apricot, and orange preserves, just to give it a little uh, excitement, a little flair, okay? Before we start that though, um, I just want to say a few things about our second year of shows. I'm going to have some good shows lined up. We're going to do one show, the culinary colors. I want to get uh, dishes, ingredients that have a lot of color and bring out nice looking colors on your um, plates. So stay tuned for that. That's coming up. I want to do a show with breads, yeasted and quick breads, soda breads, um, maybe a whole wheat bread, a French bread, something like that. And other things. I want to do some meals, a salad dressings, and different things. So we're going to have an exciting second year coming up. So uh, look for us. And I do have to apologize. We took a few months off went on vacation, we went around the world a couple times, we almost didn't come back. But now, now we're back, and you don't have to watch reruns anymore, we're, um, we're here. So, what I want to do first is, this is, uh, I want to introduce this cake, so to speak. It's an eggless chocolate cake, okay? So, um, what I have here, we have some flour, I'm going to use some buttermilk. But what, what eggs normally do in a, in a cake is they act as a binding agent, which holds the cake together, and as a little bit of leavening. So what I've done is this cake is, is a little bit, um, maybe a little bit lighter than a normal egg cake, right? But it also is, in, in another sense, it's, it's kind of rich, you know, it has a good flavor. And also I'm using a powdered cocoa for this chocolate, which gives the cake less, lower fat content. Okay, so you don't have the cholesterol of the eggs, you don't have a high fat content with the, with the chocolate. When you use a prepared like baker's chocolate, which we'll use for the icing by the way, um, that has extra fat in it. So this will be, this cake, you, you could eat two, three of them and not, you know, you don't have to worry because we're using the low fat chocolate. Okay? Anyway, I have here also some notes. Normally I don't use a recipe, and if those of you who watch the show know that um, I cook more or less the, the, the dishes I cook and what I show you how to cook is like a guide. It's not written in stone, it's not precise. But this, because it's baking, it's a chemical reaction, you have your baking powder, um, the buttermilk, and these things react with the heat, and so it's more precise. Okay, so get your pencils and your paper. You ready? Okay, you start out with three cups of flour, all right? All-purpose baking flour works well, okay? Then I take two cups of sugar, Combine it with the flour. Okay, I'm going to go slow here so you can write this down. So three cups of flour, two cups of sugar. These are all your dry ingredients. We're going to mix all those together first. Okay, four tablespoons of the cocoa powder. All right. Or a quarter cup. If you have a quarter cup measure, use that. I'm using tablespoons. All right. Okay, now, what else have I got here? Got a teaspoon of baking soda. One teaspoon, okay. Also, one teaspoon of baking powder. Look at this can, industrial sized can, right? <laughs> we do a lot of baking here. So. One you want to get a level teaspoon, okay? So just take the top right off there. Level teaspoon of baking powder. All right, now a pinch, just a pinch 
of salt, a little bit, tiny bit. Don't overdo the salt. This is the only time I'm not going to overdo the salt. Okay, so there's your dry ingredients. I'll review that one more time so you can write it down. Three cups of flour, two cups of sugar, four tablespoons of cocoa powder, one teaspoon baking soda, one teaspoon baking powder, and a pinch of salt. Okay, so I mix those up. Okay. Always be nice and neat in the kitchen. Nothing should fly out of the bowl. All right, let this powder's flying all over the place. Mix it up pretty, pretty good. Doesn't have to be totally 100% mixed. Now I take two cups buttermilk. Okay. If I say it louder, two cups. Do you remember that better? All right, and then one teaspoon of vanilla. All right, and two tablespoons of an all-purpose cooking oil. Maybe use a canola oil or a light oil, like safflower oil. This is canola oil here, okay? Don't use extra virgin olive oil. It's not appropriate for a chocolate cake, okay? So now you take, you got all your liquid. You just mix this up. Don't overmix this cake. Don't put it into your electric mixer, turn it on and walk away and have a phone conversation. The reason is the flour has um, a protein, wheat flour especially, has a protein in it called gluten, okay? When you're making bread, you need the bread, okay? That develops the gluten. It takes the protein molecules and lines them up in a in chains like string okay but what you don't want that in a cake because you don't want your cake to be chewy you want it to be light and melt in your mouth there's a you don't overmix cake you don't overmix biscuits pancakes any of those things okay so there you are now you have your cake batter one of the advantages of having a uh, eggless cake is that your kids can lick the bowl. Now eggs are unfortunately, some of them, most of them are, have salmonella, so you have to be careful about cookie dough, cake batter. Don't eat that stuff that has eggs in it. But this one you can eat. Okay. So, also, spring form pan, non-stick spring form pan. Spring, <laughs> I can't say that. Spring form pan. Okay, you can get these at good department stores. Um, this is a marvelous invention. Great thing. You don't need any oil or flour, wax paper, any of that in this, in this pan. Okay? Comes apart. Two pieces. Easy to clean. But don't use steel wool on this. In fact, what I do is I just take a dry towel and just wipe it out, take it apart, wipe it out, clean it up, and then I wrap it in paper or something because this nonstick coating will scratch easily. And when it comes off, you'll have a spot where your cakes and, and whatever you're making will stick. So take good care of this and it'll take care of you. All right, anyway, you can buy two of these and make two smaller cakes. They bake a little faster that way, but I don't have two of them. So, I wanna make a nice big cake. 